So I've recently come out with a couple videos talking about how we're getting $4,000 a week in production on this vegetable farm. And in this video, I want to explain a little bit about our yields that we're harvesting every week to get to that $4,000. I think that'll kind of clear up uh, any confusion you get from that because just the number could mean a lot of different things, but I want to really explain how much food we're really producing on a half an acre of land, which is a tiny amount of land. You know, you could do a half an acre of production in Chicago, downtown, in, in the city of Chicago. You know, that's not a lot of land. So um, I'm going to go over that today. I'm going to go over our core crops that are producing those kinds of numbers and some of the crops that produce less. Um, and the point I'm making with this video is not to brag or anything, because I think eventually that number is going to be a lot bigger for our farm. But once we expand, because eventually we're going to be doing one to one and a half acres of production. But the point I'm making here is that you can grow a lot of food on a small land base and make a living or grow food for your family. And I do offer a gardening course called Gardening 101. The link is in the description where I'm teaching you the similar techniques that I use on this farm to use in your backyard and grow a truckload of food for your family on a couple hundred square feet of land. You know, you don't need a lot of land to do this kind of production. So on every bed that you see behind me, we're trying to get two crops a year in the field. Some of the crops grow so big and bulky that we don't really need to get two crops to make money and produce some amount of food. Like this celery is an example. This celery is going to be almost double the size by the time we harvest it and it'll be worth at least $5 each. Um, so we don't need to get two crops for that. But most of the other crops you see behind me, like these carrots, um, they're the second crop. This is a fall crop. So the technique that I'm talking about is growing really high yield crops and growing multiple crops in the same space if possible. Um, so both of those things combined is how we get to $4,000 a week on a half an acre of production. So let's get into it and uh, highly encourage you to check out that gardening course in the description. It's a game changer. Um, you'll be able to grow $1,200 worth of food in 200 square feet with the techniques I talk about in that course. So check it out and let's get into the video. Okay, so you could probably take a guess what, uh, about what I'm going to talk about next, and that is tomatoes. So tomatoes are one of the most profitable crops that we grow on the farm. And uh, I guess I should actually explain that a little more. It's not exactly about the profit that they bring in, but the yield that they bring in in this small amount of space is incredible. So these are our Granadero Paste tomatoes. And they are just exploding this year. It's the best crop I've ever had. And um, we're getting, they're, they're, we're not just growing paste, we're growing paste, beefsteak, heirloom, ch and cherry tomatoes throughout the farm. Um, we've got one, this is our second crop right now. The first crop is still producing really well um, that we planted back in April. This crop we planted late May. And they're just exploding right now. We're in full tomato production right now. We're doing three to 400 pounds of tomatoes per week. That's a lot. And it's the most I've ever done. And um, that yield is uh, for indeterminate tomatoes. So we're getting that every week. And we've been getting about two to 250 every week since like 4th of July. And it just exploded once we had the second crop come in. So that's between all four different kinds, but the paste tomatoes are really exploding right now, as you can see. Um, and the way we're getting these yields is these are grafted tomatoes. So we've grafted them onto a rootstock uh, back in March and in February for the first crop. So that's a separate variety of tomato that you splice onto the variety you want to produce. And that increases yield a lot if you get the right rootstock. And that's really complicated. I can't explain it in this video. And that's in that farm course that I've talked about in the past. And it's very hard to do. I'm not going to lie. I've screwed it up many times. And I've got, I got a pretty good results with it this year. And certain varieties do better. But that increases yields a lot. Um, 
So that's a big reason we're getting the kind of yields we're getting because there's only about a little over 200 plants in this greenhouse and about uh, 150 in the other one. So it's not a lot of plants if you know about tomato production, but we, get, we graft them, we prune the bottom leaves and prune the suckers. So they're all growing uh, up a string and so that increases yields also in the space that we have. They're in a greenhouse also, and then they are um, on drip irrigation as well. The drip irrigation we have on a timer, so it's a completely even watering, and we don't have any problems with splitting or anything like that. So it's a pretty complicated process, but it's worth it to get those kinds of numbers because right now we're actually getting $5 a pound for all those tomatoes and $7 a pound for cherries. Six dollars a pound for heirlooms. They're very valuable in our climate. Nobody can grow them in their garden here because it's still below 50 degrees at night. So very few people can have tomatoes in the western mountains. You know, again, I'm in Cody, Wyoming for anybody who's new. So it's a very mountainous, cold climate. So it's very hard to grow tomatoes here. So they're very valuable. I'm the only guy at a big city market with them. So it's pretty easy to get that price. And I just heard that organic tomatoes at the store are $5 a pound anyway, so I don't feel bad at all about that price. I used to think that was really expensive, um, but after doing the work involved with this, we're pruning these and maintaining them every week. I have employees managing them. It's a very intense process. So that's how we can get those numbers. But when you get that kind of price, it's, it's quite a bit of money. So that's almost $1,000 a week in tomatoes right now, probably more. Uh, and it goes up and down, depends on the yield. They ripen uh, differently depending on the weather. There's all sorts of factors in there, but those kinds of numbers are possible with that, that amount of space. We're only using a quarter or a little, little less than half of the greenhouse, this whole greenhouse for tomatoes. So we still have room to grow all sorts of other stuff like cucumbers, which are the other ridiculously profitable crop that we get great numbers on. Um, we're getting about 200 cucumbers a week right now. And that's actually kind of low for the amount of plants. I'm sure we can get better. Um, and uh, we kind of do the similar technique with tomatoes. We prune the bottom leaves and the suckers with those and grow them up a string with drip tape. Um, similar fertility. We're doing, um, we fed these crops every week um, with uh, alfalfa meal and stuff. That also helps a lot. I've noticed um, just after this is like the third year I've been doing this, so it's working really, really well. Um, and so that's those all that work gets you those kinds of numbers. And if you have really good employees, it doesn't cost that much. It just you, you need to do it fast and um, make sure that those fer fertilizers aren't that expensive. So it's it becomes really profitable when you do it that way. Um, but those two crops are bringing in the bulk of that $4,000, it's about $1,500 a week um, between the two of those. And it's every single week. It's just like clockwork. Um, I don't have to replant another crop. It just keeps coming, you know? So it's a really nice crop. It's, you know, we've been getting those kinds of numbers with tomatoes for since the 4th of July. Um, and the other thing about it is it helps sell all the other crops I'm going to talk about. Tomatoes just, when you are the only guy with tomatoes at the market, you could sell almost anything you want. So the other crops I'm about to talk about are you're even more profitable, uh, but they're harder to sell. So when you put them right next to your tomatoes, you can really make a lot of money that way. So um, yeah, I think that's kind of helpful information for people who are kind of getting into this and learning what kind of numbers you can make. But this is literally what we're making right at this minute. And I'm sure we can make a lot more in the future. And it's hard the, the big caveat with tomatoes is it takes a lot of skill to grow like this. I mean, I screwed up bad. This is the fourth year I've been growing them like this, and it was not even close to those numbers, the first three. There's a lot of little um, intricacies that I can't explain in this video um, that you have to learn um, to get those kinds of numbers. It's not really that easy, especially, and it all depends on your climate too. So there's a lot of things... I don't want to make it sound like it's easy to get those numbers, but um, that's the numbers we're getting right now. Let's move on to the next crops. <clears throat> uh, 
All right, so next thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, probably the biggest money maker of all, which is salad greens. And I'm kind of leaving that as a broad category because it kind of, um, cut greens, we grow like a bunch of different kinds of those. We grow, Salanova lettuce is the biggest. Um, arugula is the second biggest. We grow tons of both of these. But we also do tons of spinach, miner's lettuce, baby kale, all cut salad greens that are bubbled, spun, dried, and bagged. And it all pretty much is the same price. Just depends on, you know, the volume people are buying. But um, the price changes a little bit in the winter when we're, you know, really the only person with any fresh produce. It's a little more expensive. But bottom line is uh, we're doing about 60 to 80 pounds of salad greens a week right now. And lots of other farms do way more numbers than that. But just at the level that we're at in our market, that's what's working. Um, we're selling about 30, 40% of that. No, actually about 50% of that to restaurants. Um, and we're slowly selling more and more at this new market we're at, at full retail price. So we're getting anywhere from seven to $10 a pound on the greens. Um, Lots more of them are starting to go to the farmer's market at $10 a pound, and that's working really, really well. Um, you know, it's taken me a while to get to that level. It's hard to get a top dollar for them when that's all you're selling. But now that we're selling at a bigger market with a lot more people, we can get a better price. And um, the real key with this is the yields. You know, the price is definitely important, but... Uh, you know, the more yield you can sell, keyword selling, um, is where you can really make the money there. So, you know, that's that's providing, you know, six to eight hundred dollars a week, basically. Uh, and we really want to sell them more, more and more at the uh, farmer's market. But you got to be careful with it because these are the one product that definitely have a shelf life. The Salanova has an incredible shelf life for a cut lettuce. It probably lasts seven to 10 days. I've had it last two weeks and I probably would still sell it. It's incredible. I don't know why, but it just, when it's growing well, it lasts a really long time. But arugula is really about a week max, four to seven days. And most of the other greens don't last as long. Spinach lasts a really long time. So you got to make sure you sell it because um, if you cut it and wash it, dry it, and it goes bad, you got problems. And having a cold room is a really key detail here. That's what's gonna pretty much guarantee that you sell it all. When I used to do this before I had a cold room, it was just so much riskier. If there was a slow market, I lose all, you know, half the crop. So key detail is being able to sell it and having a cold room, because once, if you have a slow market, you could at least bring it back to the cold room and find another market. But um, salad greens are a huge part of the business. Um, you know, and you can't, it's hard in my market to sell these by themselves. You got to sell them with some kind of draw in the summertime, at least, you know, so those tomatoes are what I'm talking about. That's a huge draw. Um, we're the only people with tomatoes at the market right now. And that's how we're able to sell, you know, 40 pounds of this at full retail price. Um, you know, and, uh, this particular Salanova lettuce also is just a spectacular product. Um, it lasts a really long time. People love it. It's very versatile. You can put it on sandwiches, but restaurants love it. Um, it's easy to harvest. You know, the way we can get really good yields on this, this whole bed, when we cut it, will probably yield 50, 60 pounds. Cause it's going to, this isn't really ready yet. This is two, two weeks away and it'll get way bigger. Um, it'll fill out the bed and it'll be completely like an ocean of lettuce and we'll cut it. And then it regrows a uh, slightly lower yield, the second cut, but it does grow a second cut and, um, you'll get at least 80 pounds per bed. That's a lot of money right there. Um, that's, if you do the math on that, it's just say you get $7 a pound. I think that's Oh, it's seven times eight. I'm not, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't, can't remember it off the top of my head, but, uh, you know, that's between like six and $800, you know, on, in about 60 days. Um, that's really profitable. 
you know, most crops don't yield that kind of number. So we really try to focus a lot on this. Um, it's a very expensive seed. There's a lot to growing lettuce, but once you get good at growing lettuce, you can grow any kind of lettuce and it works well. So that's a really big part of our business is cut greens. So 60 to 80 pounds is part of that $4,000 number. Let's move on to the next crop. So these are probably the most underrated crop ever. These are pea shoots. And uh, I started growing these two years ago and um, I just started actually selling them in the summer this year. I normally was just doing it in the winter because I figured they'd be really hard to sell and they are pretty hard to sell. But in when you have a really good market and you have a draw crop like tomatoes, you could sell a lot of these. And um, we also do sunflower shoots and a couple other microgreens. Um, but these yield incredible amounts of shoots per flat. This one flat right here will probably yield two pounds, just about two pounds of pea shoots at $16 a pound. I could sell at the market all day. And people really love them after they try them. It's great on a sandwich. Um, it's a great little rabbit food thing to add to the salad department on your booth. And, um, you know, we're selling about eight pounds at the market a week right now of this in sunflower shoots. It's doing really, really well. Um, so that's a huge money maker. Um, we also sell this to restaurants. The restaurants love to buy it. Um, and, uh, you know, it, a lot of, um, wholesalers are selling pea shoots anyway, and a fancy restaurant is going to be buying them anyway. So your product is going to be 10 times better than theirs anyway, because it's so fresh. It has a great shelf life. It's almost better than salad greens for some reason. I'm finding it lasts like two weeks. No problem. I, I don't know why, you know, every sing you'll find that every single leaf crop has a different shelf life. Like herbs are really weird too. Certain herbs will last forever. Certain ones won't, but shoots are a huge money maker. We're doing eight pounds a week at $16 a pound. So that's a huge part of that $4,000. And we just started really doing well with that about two weeks ago. Um, but it works really well when you play it off salad mix and arugula, you can do a two for nine deal or something where you mix and match and people will buy one bag of salad mix, one five ounce bag of this works great. Um, and, uh, you know, it just, it's a very, very good money maker. So you got to try doing it if you are doing any kind of farming and it's very easy to produce once you learn how, um, and it's, I can't explain how to do it here, but there's lots of videos out there on how to do it. So highly recommend you try shoots. <clears throat> Okay, so you might be able to guess what our next crop is if you've ever grown them, and that is carrots. I've talked about this in a couple other videos, but um, we have like, oh, I forgot how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, at least six beds of carrots growing out in the field right now and about eight or so growing in the get greenhouses so um that can tell you a little bit of how important carrots are for the farm um we're doing about 150 to 200 bunches of carrots a week so one of these beds gets harvested every week at least sometimes two um we have enough labor right now where we can do that it does take quite a while to harvest carrots um but carrots are just they're just like a bomb proof crop because you're always going to sell them. Um, you know, you can either sell them bunched or you break them down and sell them into one pound bags and people are going to buy them. Um, so we grow them a lot of them fresh bunched. That's the best way to make money. Um, but you know, worst case scenario, you break them down after the market and sell them bagged and that's pretty good as well. Um, a lot of what you see right here is our storage crop that we're going to sell in the winter. Um, and so there's a variety that's supposed to last six months or something. Um, so we're going to do like 600 pounds of those, um, and sell them slowly over the winter. You know, um, I don't want to do too many of that, too much of that. Cause it's pretty hard to s harvest 600 pounds in like a day. 
uh, <clears throat> and we try to do it quick because you want to harvest that before it gets too cold. Um, otherwise, they've turned a little bit crunchy and weird, but they don't store as well. So we'll harvest those sometime in October, probably this year. But carrots are a big backbone of the farm and basically all root crops, but carrots are the most important because a lot of people can grow beets and radishes and stuff in their garden, but very few grow carrots well because it's hard to germinate them. And it's, uh, that's the mo number one reason I think um, most people just can't germinate them or they forget to plant them again in July. You know, we plant them basically every uh, every month we'll do a big planting uh four or five beds at a time and do uh you know start that in like march through july you know and that's our carrots for the whole year pretty much i've tried doing a couple weird plantings in january and that sort of works um but yeah we do lots and lots of carrots it's a big backbone of the farm and so we're doing 150 to 200 bunches it depends on the size of the carrots um how big our bunches are, how good the germination was on that bed. And sometimes I'll harvest them before it's going to yield us 200 bunches because I need to flip that bed to some other crop. It doesn't really matter if we wait to get the full yield. But, you know, at a minimum of $3 a bunch, that's a lot of money. That's at least $600 a week, more usually. Um, we do this thing where we're doing rainbow carrots and regular carrots and you get two for six at the market and that works really well, but you charge $4 for one. So you're getting basically three fifty a bunch that way. And it works really well because not everybody buys two and all sorts of stuff. So carrots are a big part of it. We do a fair amount of beets, radishes, probably about the same amount in those three crops, beets, radishes, and green onions, um, a week, but our yields on those have not been as good as I want them to be. Um, mostly that's just because of just stuff going wrong. And I don't really try that hard on beets because they don't make that much money. Um, they're a lot harder to sell also. Carrots just, I'll sell three to one on beets. Um, you know, people don't get as excited about beets. Radishes have been very good, but they don't grow well in the summer. I can't get them to produce well when the flea beetles are going crazy and it's hot. So I wish I could grow more radishes. I think next year I will be able to, but, um, so that's a huge part of that number two. Let's move on to the next crop. <clears throat> All right, so herbs in general are, um, a huge part of our business now. Um, slowly built that into the business because it is hard to sell them on their own but we're selling a lot to restaurants right now and a lot at the farmers market so right now we're only doing parsley cilantro and dill and they're all kind of growing roughly the same and bunched the same priced the same we're doing about three dollars a bunch for roughly a four ounce bunch but sometimes it's six ounces or eight ounces depending on what's going on but um these are really profitable crops. I mean, this one bed of parsley will probably bring in $800. And that's because we're gonna harvest it at least twice. And there's gonna be probably 300 and something bunches coming out of here. Um, and uh, <clears throat> it might be a little less than 800 actually, because this one won't. Uh, go as long but that first bed we had did at least a thousand dollars because we harvested it like three times parsley comes back again and again and again and um you know it's really valuable at a market like mine because you're if you're the only guy with it people want that and if it's really fresh it, you, they get a big bunch that looks way better than the old stuff at the store it's a huge huge money maker you just got to have a cold room and you know be able to store it um, and this one has a great shelf life. Um, cilantro and dill, which is what you see behind me, um, we do a lot of that as well. That's probably even more profitable, but, well, not quite, because it's just, you have to plant that so much more often. Parsley, you plant it once and it just keeps going, but the cilantro and dill will bolt. But we're getting at least two crops out of that each bed, and it's just a tr truckload. We're selling a lot of those to restaurants, and the cilantro is just going like hotcakes at the market because people are making salsa with the tomatoes. Um, so we're doing 150 to 200 bunches of, of herbs per week right now between the three of those crops um, at between 2 to $3 a bunch, you know, depending on who's buying it. So that's a huge part of that number. 
I anticipate we'll be doing at least 500 bunches a week soon. Um, not, not this year, but next year, um, because the market's just going to keep, as our production of things like tomatoes and those draw crops increase and our reputation increases, we'll just sell more. We'll sell more to restaurants. We're going to also start doing perennial herbs like oregano, rosemary, stuff like that. You could charge more for those. Um, and they all herbs grow back. So you get at least two cuts per, per bed. And, um, it's, it's not a super sexy crop, you know, it's not good, but once you get people into it, they're going to come back to your booth just to buy those like dill people. I have a lot of Eastern European customers that are coming back just to buy dill and our dill looks so much better than most dill at the market because it doesn't go to seed. It's always fresh and we plant it all the time to keep it that way, but it's worth it because of the amount of production you can get and yield. So, um, really big part of our business you know that's uh what is that you know five to six hundred dollars a week just in those crops and um we did a terrible with basil this year basil is another huge money maker but um i just didn't do a very good job of growing the plants this year so they're really behind and not growing well but basil is even more money so herbs are just a big big part of making a lot of money in a small space so let's move on to the next crops Okay, last but definitely not least is um, what I'm calling miscellaneous crops, which is a, like a lot of different crops. But um, they all we kind of sell them all the same. They're all about like three to four dollars per unit, um, and we're doing 250 to 300 of those units per week on between all the different stuff. You know, it depends on the week. So like cabbage was really hot the last couple of weeks. We're almost done with that. That was $3 a unit. We're doing 50, 60 heads of those a week. Head lettuce, 50, 60 heads of those a week. Celery, um, that's just going to start coming on in a couple of weeks. Um, we're actually doing bunch of celery right now. We just started that. I just did 100 bunches of those today. Um, and those are selling at $4 a bunch. Celery is a very profitable crop because nobody grows it and it's delicious, tastes so much better than the store. Organic celery right now is $4 a pound or something right now at the store. So it's like exactly the same as the store, but light years better. Um, celery is a really good one. Um, it takes forever to grow, but once you have it and people have tried it, it's, it's a big money maker because you could charge a lot for it. People who are juicing are gonna buy a truckload of it because it's actually really cheap for juice because it's like 100% juice and the juice quality is off the charts. So um, celery is one of my favorites. Um, we sell it, we're trying it as a head, full head and bunched this year. The bunching, you can actually pick, we're gonna get at least two crops out of that batch. Um, if you plant it early enough, you can get three. You just take the outer stems and then it regrows from the center. Um, big, big money maker. Um, so between those, all of those, it's like a thousand dollars a week in those miscellaneous crops. And that means that's including kale, chard, um, stuff like that. You know, so we try to incorporate a lot of those to add variety to the table. We're growing 25 different crops right now. Um, I don't know if that's going to change a whole lot in the future and we might go up to 40, maybe a maximum, but, um, there's just this, there's a, I don't want to do too much variety cause it gets hard. Each crop is a definitely a skill set in growing. I'd say actually oh, throughout the year, we do probably grow about 40 different crops, but right now it's about 25 that we're actually harvesting. That's including stuff like summer squash and zucchini, but all those crops add up to money, um, at your market table. And so, um, so between all of the crops I've talked about in this video, that's where we're getting the average of $4,000 a week. And last week was almost five. This week will be probably close to five and then it'll start to go down again. So it really depends on what's going on. You know, we're going to harvest shallots soon and that's going to be, that'll make it like 6,000, but that's something we sell throughout the year. And when I say 4,000 a week, it doesn't necessarily mean we're selling that every week. Although right now we pretty much are, um, some of it we store and sell later, like carrots bagged will sell later. If we have a bumper crop, we could st stretch that a little bit because we have a cold room. 
stuff like cabbage also if i needed to harvest a whole bed at once i could sell that months later if i wanted to celery i could probably sell a month later it lasts forever um salad greens we got to sell that pretty much that week but kale even you can stretch that for a while so um we have sold every almost everything we've grown this year. There's a couple pounds of herb greens that we didn't sell at the very beginning before the markets really picked up, but we're selling everything right now. So we're producing $4,000 a week. Almost everything we sell is in about a $3 portion. That's kind of standard farmer's market thing. The tomatoes, there's more just because if we didn't do that, we would sell out in an hour and then everything else would stop selling. You'll notice if you're in that position that and if you sell out of tomatoes in two hours, the last two hours, your sales drop because the draw to your boost stops. So we are trying to sell it slow throughout that whole period to sell out of the salad greens and stuff. And it's working really, really well. Um, right now, I don't think we have any problem. We have so many. We'll start freezing them and selling them in the winter. But um, And even with tomatoes, if you don't sell them, you freeze them and you could sell them $4 a pound in the winter and people use them in, in stews and stuff and it works great. So, you know, that $4,000 a week is just a rough average um, and um, it depends. I, I mean, we could really bump that up if we had everything going perfectly like I had planned, it might have been five. You know, in farming, a lot of things go wrong. I'm still a pretty young farm and I'm a young farmer. I'm still learning a lot. So I still make mistakes and um, things go wrong. So um, that's like, you know, a real nice solid number for me. I'm very happy with that this year, um, given the, the size of the farm. And again, we're a half an acre farm. I think we have a total of about 80 50 foot beds. That's not that much. 50 foot means... 50 feet long, two and a half feet wide. So this, this bed right here is a 50 foot bed of celery. That's a 50 foot bed of lettuce. So um, we're doing that. And some of those, you know, the tomatoes is like, I did a video a long time ago, uh, earlier this year about how much money you can make in a greenhouse. And I talked about some of the numbers you can make on one bed of tomatoes. One bed of tomatoes this year for us is about $2,000 in revenue at least. Um, and that depends on, you know, how early it is and stuff, but, uh, those numbers are just numbers. You know, it depends on how successful you are, that the weather, all sorts of stuff, but baseline numbers, that's what you can expect if you're good. And that's a key detail. You know, I, I saw those, some of these numbers a long time ago and I got really excited my first year and I expected to get them and I didn't like, Things just don't work well until you build your skill set as a grower. And um, I'm still doing that myself. So there's a lot of factors involved. And labor is another factor, too. You got to have really good labor to make all these numbers happen easily, at least, and not break your back. Um, and we do this year. I'm very fortunate that we do. Um, but um, this is just in a, kind of a glimpse of what is possible because, again, we're only doing a half an acre of production. Um, I think it's pretty incredible to be able to bring in that kind of revenue on a half an acre because lots of places in the world have a half an acre to grow on. It's not very much land, um, especially with the price of land going up now. So just wanted to put this video out there because when I first started, I looked for these kinds of numbers, like the yields that a uh, farm was getting, because it helps you kind of plan a potential of, uh, of your business. I think it's it's helpful to know what other farms are accomplishing so you know what's possible at least. Um, and um, there's a lot of factors to yields and I'm sure my yields can be a lot better. That, that, you know, I want to get better at growing more food on a small space every single year in the same bed. And that's how you can really make money with this. And I know that as, as my skills improve, that will be possible. But um, this is what I'm accomplishing right now. And um, you know, hopefully this inspires somebody's out there to, uh, you know, think twice about starting a farm or something. So hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next one.